Hi, hope you're having a good day. I want to talk about mucus today. Uh, we have a lot of queries coming in from people all across the world about this excess mucus formation. Now, we have to understand why mucus forms in the body. Is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? Well, we all need mucus. We have mucosal membranes that line right from the nose right up to the lungs. And the job of these membranes in the human body is to provide mucus. Mucus has a very important function in the human body. Mucus helps you trap bacteria, pathogens, germ, germs, <clears throat> dust particles, foreign invaders. So the mucus holds on to it. It's sticky and it's thick. It's a gel-like substance. So for example, if you go to a very polluted area and later you blow your nose, sometimes you'll see that the stuff, the mucus that comes out of your nose is black in color because it's picked up soot, it's picked up coal, it's picked up different, you know, all allergens from the dust. Uh, if you go to places where there's a lot of red mud and at the end of the day you blow your nose or you have this mucus that comes out, you'll find that it's reddish in color. That's the job of mucus. That's a good thing. That's your body doing the right thing for you at the right time. The mucus trapped all the particles which is not supposed to be absorbed into your body and it tries to flush it out <clears throat> in the form of, you know, mucus coming out of our system. So mucus isn't the problem. The problem is when our body produces more mucus than required. And when we have more mucus in the body, that, pre that creates a lot of problems. One is, it keeps a lot of the bacteria and the pathogens trapped inside your system. The more mucus you have, especially around your organs and in your body, it deprives those cells of oxygen, making your cells more acidic. We all know that the more alkaline you are, the healthier your body is. We all know that most diseases breed in an acidic environment. So when we deprive oxygen to the cells and when you have too much of mucus in your system, that's one of the reasons why we request people going through cancer to get off mucus forming foods and one of them being milk because milk is highly mucus forming. And of course, we have milk which is filled with antibiotics and estrogen and <clears throat> all of those things. The mucus production in the body, mucus forming foods will actually trap bacteria and germs in your body and it'll make your body more acidic depriving your cells of oxygen which is really the prana and what is required to heal you. So for example when you have excess mucus in your nostrils we term this as sinusitis or sinus. When you have excess mucus in your lungs it is called it's called pneumonia. When you have excess mucus in your bronchial tubes it's called bronchitis. When you have excess mucus in your around your prostate gland it's called prostatitis. And when you have excess, when a woman has excess, mu excess mucus around her uterus, it's usually heavy vaginal discharge, it's yeast infections, or something called endometriosis. So what we have to see is how we can break this excess mucus in the human body. And number two, why is my body producing excess mucus? So a lot of excess mucus happens when we eat acid-breaking foods. You see the acids in your food break down the mucus in your mucosal linings. Your stomach has a lining of mucus, mucose membranes. It's called, it's called mucosal, your mucosal lining or your mucosal membrane. The job is to produce just the right amount of mucus. But when we are extremely acidic or we're eating too many acid-forming foods, the acids in these foods start you know, eating into the lining of your mucosal membrane. So your gut, your stomach, and all that mucus now comes back into your body. It's supposed to stay in your mucosal membrane, but it now comes back into your blood. So all of a sudden you have excess mucus in the body. Now the body will find different ways of pushing this mucus out. So sometimes we get a cold or we get a cough because we try to eject mucus in the terms of a cough or by constantly clearing our throat. Some people have post-nasal dripping, which means there will be dripping of mucus from their nose at any given point in the day. And it's important to look at the function of food in this case. If you're eating acid forming or mucus forming foods, most people who have post nasal drips, it is because of the food that they eat. Now there's a difference between phlegm and mucus. Phlegm is when there is too much of mucus in your body and it gets infected. So you'll see yellow phlegm, you'll see green phlegm. These are signs of your mucus, which now becomes phlegm, being infected. And this is the time when you know that there is infection in your body. Still, your body doing the right thing at the right time for you. But now because there's infection, it can come along with a fever or it can cause a bacterial infection. And we need to understand very, very clearly that antibiotics treat bacteria. They treat bacterial infections. They do not treat viruses. So your common cold, cough, your viral fevers, no amount of antibiotics that you take will treat it. You just have to let your body's immunity grow strong 
and overcome that. So do not take antibiotics when you have a viral infection. It is only meant for bacterial infections. So again, phlegm is a sign that there is infection in your body and you may need an antibiotic if your doctor suggests it at that point if it's gotten too bad for you. So a runny nose again is your body doing the right thing at the right time. So when your nose starts running, don't run off to your doctor to take a pill that stops that from happening. The, the very fact is your body's trying to protect you. It's pushing out mucus through a runny nose. Sometimes it comes out through phlegm in your mouth or in your throat. Let that happen. That's your body taking out this excess mucus before it becomes inflected, infected phlegm in the body. Don't just run to a doctor and take a pill to stop your nose from running. And it's a bad habit for people who use I'm not going to mention the name of the drug or the spray, but it's something that they spray in their nose so that it dries up all of the mucus so they don't have a runny nose. That may bring you comfort, but that is detrimental to your health in the long term because what's going to happen is you're going to dry up all of the areas of your sinus and you're going to have more problems and lower immunity at the end of the day. Sometimes we just got to deal with the things that happen to our body and let your body run its natural defense mechanism to heal you. <clears throat> There are some medications which also dry up mucus in the body, so you want to be sure on the side effects of every medication that you take. Now, what's the solution for breaking down excess mucus in the body? So we have to understand, again, your body will start producing more mucus when you're in areas of more pollution, when there's more dust, when there are allergens in the air. Sometimes food additives and food like color, certain preservatives will also make your child or you develop a lot of mucus. Sometimes you have like yogurt at night and you'll find that your nose gets stuffy immediately. Immediately you need to understand that your nose is producing mucus to protect you. It is the inflammatory response of the human body. So again, when we eat more junk food and all these processed foods which have several food additives and colors and allergens in the body, all of these can make you produce more mucus. And then taking medication to take out mucus isn't the idea, but getting to the root cause of what is forming mucus in your body is the right solution. So here are the solutions when it comes to, when it comes to breaking down mucus. Number one, water. You want to make sure that you have the right amount of water in your system. By now it's 1.30, I've already seen several patients and today all of them had less than three glasses of water intake in their day. The basics of the water intake in the body were not met and they come with disease and different problems. So it is so important for you to understand that you have to maintain the, li the right levels of hydration and water to make sure that you don't form uh, you know, uh, excess mucus in the body. My favorite concoction for children and adults as well is a mixture of honey, lemon, ginger, and turmeric. The best way to break down mucus in the body. So you have a good honey. Remember, we don't want to do organic. We don't want to do processed honey. Your honey has to be raw and unheated for it to have the medicinal values and properties. Okay, you want to mix that with a little bit of lemon, hot water, mashed ginger, and pure turmeric. Again, all of these things put together will help you break down mucus naturally in the human body. When you have excess mucus, you want to drink hot liquids throughout the day. I'm not talking about coffee and tea. I'm talking about hot water. I'm talking about herbal infusions. Anything that has ginger, turmeric, or just plain hot water to loosen up the mucus. Once you loosen up the mucus in the body, your body has the, the, me the mechanism to throw it out automatically. Sometimes if you feel a lot of mucus in your throat or nose, salt water gargling. You want to take pink salt, warm water, and you want to gargle a little bit to loosen up the mucus. You don't want to gargle too much because then you're going to dry up your throat and that's also a problem for you. Steaming is by far my favorite. You take hot water, a dash of turmeric, or a little bit of eucalyptus oil, or even plain hot water. You put a towel over your head, make sure you don't get burnt, and you inhale for about five minutes. Inhale and exhale the steam. The steam goes up your sinus canals all over, loosening up all of the mucus, and then you can post your steam, you do a forward bend. You know, Google a forward bend, it's basically a yoga move, it's an asana, you do a forward bend. So after your steam, you'll just be dripping like a tap, but let that happen. You steam and you do a forward bend to let all that mucus come out. There's something called a nati pot as well. This pot you can get on Amazon or everywhere. You fill it with water and they show you instructions of how to put it through one nostril, pushes out all the mucus from the other nostril. It's fantastic for you. You can do it wherever you are in the world. Cayenne pepper. We spoke about cayenne pepper yesterday. So cucumber and cayenne pepper. You can eat a lot of cucumber. It helps you break down mucus even though it's a cold food. Cucumber will help you break down mucus. My favorite juice is a little bit of cucumber and a dash of cayenne pepper. This will help the mucus come out immediately. Try it. Cucumber, cayenne pepper, and the mucus will start coming out immediately. My favorite vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, 
cabbage and radish. Sulfur rich vegetables which will help the mucus break in your system. Again, you don't want to do this raw, you want to do it steamed or you want to do it cooked. A soup made out of carrot and pumpkin with a little bit of black pepper helps you to break down mucus and it also helps you reduce inflammation in your sinus areas, in your chest, in your lungs and in your throat as well. Onion and garlic again, all Indian meals should be should consist of onion and garlic because again onion will break down the mucus so you can cut some onion soak it in water for about four to six hours and then you can drink that water the best way is eat raw onion and eat a little bit of raw, raw garlic and that will break down mucus in your system as well now some of the food some of the allergens that cause mucus in people we all know that some people today are wheat intolerant or milk intolerant but the foods that we've seen over the years that if you have a lot of mucus you may want to see if any of these foods are causing your mucus in the body. One is dairy, of course. One is wheat, corn, eggs, sugar, white sugar, soy, deep fried foods, refined oil, alcohol. These are the most common foods that we've seen in our experience that can cause mucus to form in your body if it's not pollution and if it's not your exp exposure to allergens and allergens in food. Again, this is all the food part of it. It doesn't matter how well you eat. What matters is how well what you how, uh, what matters is what you eat how well it gets assimilated and circulated. So exercise is extremely important for you to break down mucus. Your walking, your exercise, and a lot of yoga because when you do yoga, you move into certain positions that can loosen up mucus in the human body. So again, it's a holistic approach to breaking down mucus. You want to understand that having a lot of mucus in your body is not a good thing, and you can be popping all the tablets in the world to reduce the mucus, but then you are missing the underlying root cause of why you have mucus and you want to get to that root cause of what's happening because if there's acidic if there's acidity in your body constipation also leads to a lot of mucus forming in your colon and you'll see that when you pass out a stool a lot of mucus in your stool that is not a good thing for you that is not a good thing for inflammatory diseases like cancer diabetes you name it heart disease you want to make sure that you only produce mucus when the body requires to produce mucus at the right time. That's how the human body works. It's based on nature, physiology, biology, chemistry, and simple math. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep. The drug of the future, the drug of the present, will be the lifestyle changes that you can make for you, your loved ones, your family, your children. Have a great day, everyone.